Let's have a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you all this time. We bless your name. Thank you for gathering us together, your own servant, your own people. I want to do something great, something marvelous, something unforgettable in every life so that we can take this gospel, the pure gospel, to the rest of our community, our country, a world in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that a fresh, a new, mighty, powerful anointing will come on everyone. Amen. And we're asking, Lord, that nobody here will come in vain. Amen. Nobody will just be entertained, they will be energized empowered more anointed in Jesus name Lord we pray you'll use everyone every man every woman every minister every worker every professional in a way you have not used us before raise up a mighty army and make us part of that mighty army. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. You know that we're here so that we'll talk about the end time army of the Lord. And the army is to get something done, to do the will of God, to do the work of God, and to penetrate our community, our country in these last days, and to go beyond that every Christian body in every nation will have the new power and the new anointing and a new understanding, and a new passion, and the new drive of soldiers in Christ, so that we will take the gospel everywhere. The Lord had given the great commission. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means every creature in our neighborhood, every creature in our community, every creature in our country, every creature in every nation. I want to so preach that they will believe the word we're preaching and when they believe, they'll be saved, they'll be baptized in water and they abide with the Lord learning the word of the Lord are moving on and they too and they become the sons of God, the daughters of God they also become the servants of God that will take the same gospel that has saved them, take it everywhere in the world and before Christ comes then many would have known, would have heard what he came to do in his first coming and as they give their lives to the Lord, they'll be saved like we are saved they'll be steadfast in the Lord like we are steadfast in the Lord and they'll remain and abide until the coming of the Lord and great will be the joy on that day when he comes and we are ready you are ready I'm ready and then we go with him and will abide with him forever in Jesus name today in this session we're talking about an army God's army unconquerable army is something to have an army a group of people a company of people it's another thing to have an unconquerable army unconquerable by any powers on the earth today unconquerable by any group of people today unconquerable by anyone that the enemy might send to confront us and unconquerable army God's own unconquerable army. 
How does that happen? There is a creation, a recreation. There is a regeneration. There is a new, a reformation. That is, he forms. And then he trains and he reforms again. And there is a commissioning. Today we are talking on the recreation. And the recommissioning of God's unconquerable army. We're looking at the passage in Ezekiel chapter 37. And I'm reading from verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 37. Reading from verse 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Then in verse 2 it says, And he caused me to pass by them, to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and low. They were very dry. In verse 3, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Verse 4, in verse 4, it says again, He said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5, it says, Thus says the Lord God, Unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. Verse 6 tells us, it says in verse 6, And I will lay sinews upon you. And will bring a flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live. Ye shall live. It says and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. In verse 8, it says, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them about, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9. In verse 9, then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this lane that they may live. Verse 10. In verse 10, so I prophesied. So I prophesied. So I prophesied as he commanded me. As he, the God of heaven, as he, the God of recreation, as he, the God of revival, as he, the God of renewal, as he, the God of all possibilities commanded me and breath, the breath came into them. It will come. And they lived and they stood up upon their feet and exceeding great army. That's why we're here. That's why you're here. That you'll become part of that exceeding great army doing something that ought to be done in these last days that the breath the spirit the power the energy the zeal the commission the real thing that makes a man drive and die that that will come upon your life and you'll be part of that great exceeding army 
and from today until you breathe your last you will do something unforgettable for God but you know there has to be a recreation a recreation the hand of the Lord the power of the Lord the grace of God and the spirit of God coming unto you and coming upon you like never before if we remain like we were in the past we'll just be doing the same thing merry going around active but not productive it will be like the children of Israel going around in the wilderness and yet they were just going around going for years and they never entered the promised land but we are going to enter the power is going to come the anointing is going to come that which the Lord had planned and prophesied and purposed that there will be a great exceeding army in our generation it will be done in Jesus name it says an exceeding great army I will be part of that army you will be part of that army the Lord will recreate you will recommission you will empower you like never before and the work will be done in Jesus name let me say this before I go on. You see, when we have a conference like this and the ministers come together, and they, you know, we have people among us who already might have retired. And because they have retired, they say, yes, I'd like to see what those young people are doing, what those young people are seeing. And they don't think that they are here for recreation. They don't think they are here for recommissioning. They think they are here as retired people, retired and tired. And they feel that there is nothing in this for them. God called Moses at the age of 80. And when he would have retired, he would have said, nothing else for me to do. In fact, he said, even at my age, 80, I am not eloquent, I'm a stammerer. Even if I was younger, I would have tried, but why are you picking on me that I should go and do this? Since you know I can't do it, and since you know I've reached retirement age, the Lord will revive you. Yeah. He will recreate you. Yeah. Caleb was 85 beyond retiring age and then he came to Joshua he said Joshua you know what the Lord said about me even though I'm four score I'm five years old now I'm not retiring I want the difficult part of the job give me this mountain and that's the spirit in which we come we're not here as onlookers we're not here to be entertained we're here to be re-empowered and re energized and whatever our age you are young you are old you are almost retiring you are retired a new life is coming a new power is coming a new authority anointing coming upon your life in Jesus name I think if anybody should retire I I think should have retired because now I'm in between uh, uh, Moses and Caleb between 80 and 85 and you know what I say unto you I say unto myself today the Lord is going to re-empower me the things I teach I will also swallow I will also have and I'm telling you a new level is going to start in my life. I say that for you. A new level will start in your life. New energy in your life. New power in your life. New strength in your life in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the waking up. And you say waking up. If it's waking up, you do that by yourself. 
wakening up, somebody awakens you. Somebody taps you. Somebody says there is work to do. Somebody says there's a new day ahead of you. Somebody says there's a new opportunity ahead of you. Waking you up. The wakening up of slumbering souls for exploits. You are the man. You are the woman. The Lord will so empower you. You cannot sit down. You rise up and you move forward. Number two, the works of the supernatural Savior for everyone. Everyone. Everyone without exception. Number three, the wonders through spirit saturated servants for evangelism. We're looking at number one. Number one is the waking up of slumbering souls for exploits. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the powerful proclamation of prophets saints from God. Number two is the penetrating preaching of preachers submissive to God. Number three, the prevailing power of proof, proof producers supported by God. Let's look at number one. Number one, the powerful proclamation of prophets sent from God. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. What can we do without the hand of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, without the calling of the Lord upon us? What can we do? you without the re-energizing spirit and nature of God coming upon us but we must be in the right place where the hand of the Lord will come upon us. I've not heard, I've not heard if you have heard anyone called by God and the hand of the Lord upon him in a pop house. I've not heard. I've not heard of a person in a drinking parlor and the hand of the Lord came upon him if you have heard I've not heard, I've not heard of a man living adultery committing adultery and at that point of adultery the hand of the Lord came upon him we come out out of them out of those sinful people out of the practices of the past and we come to the place where we expect that the hand of the Lord the power of the Lord comes upon us if you're expecting the hand of the Lord to come upon you if you're expecting the new calling and the reviving calling and the powerful calling of the Lord to come upon your life come out of that place which is evil, which is sinful, which is degrading and which is shameful and which heaven does not approve of and it says come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and he says I will receive you it's at that point, it's in that place the hand of the Lord comes upon us and he carried me, I have to be submissive to somebody to carry me if I'm dragging if I'm resisting, if I stiffen all my muscles, he cannot carry me. You have to be totally yielded unto the Lord. Yielded to his voice and yielded to his calling. You have to say yes, Lord, from the depth of your heart. And he carried me out. And in the spirit of the Lord, he says, and he set me down. He set me down. You see, he must have the total control of our lives. It must be all in all. He must be the one that sets you down there. He says, he set me down in the midst of uh, the valley, which was full of bulls. He says in verse 2, in verse 2 he tells us, and he caused me. Uh, have you seen the effect and the impact 
of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, calling him, taking him, lifting him, setting him down, and then he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and Lord, they were very dry. If the Lord is sending you to the people that are dry, you yourself, you have to be fresh. If the Lord is telling you, is sending you to the people who are dry, who are dead, who don't have any life, you yourself that the Lord is sending to them. You must not be like them if you are dry and they are dry. How do you help them? If uh, they are sinful and you are sinful, how do you help them? If they are hypocritical and you are hypocritical, hypocritical how do you help them? If you are resistant to the spirit of God, God and you stiffen your neck and stiffen your mind, they are stiffened and they are rebellious and you are rebellious. How can you help them? If we are going to help the people who are dead and dry, we ourselves must be fresh and that freshness is coming upon you today. It says in verse 3, in verse 3 it says, and he said unto me, he was hearing the Lord. He was feeling the hand of the Lord upon him. He was being carried and submissive unto the Lord. And in that situation, he could hear the voice of the Lord. Where do I stay? Where do I live? What do I do? In which community do I live? How do I position myself that when he speaks, I can hear. He said unto me, Son of man, can these bulls live? And I answered, now, many people, some people will answer, Lord, I think they are finished. I don't think anything can happen. This denomination where I am, thank God I'm coming out now. I'm going to, when I return, I'm going to start another new thing because this one, it, they are finished. Ezekiel did not say that when God asks you a question, he knows what he will do. He knows what he can do. He can raise the dead. A dead assembly, it can raise a dead assembly. A dead fellowship, it can raise a dead fellowship. A dead, permit me, denomination, it can raise a dead denomination. It takes one Ezekiel to stay there and to have the power, the hand, the spirit of the Lord upon you. And because the spirit, the reviving spirit, the recreating spirit, the redeeming spirit of God comes upon your life, that place where you are, you will be an instrument of revival. Yeah. An instrument of salvation for them in Jesus' name. Yeah. But, 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 if they are dry, you must not be dry. But if they are idolatrous, you must not be idolatrous. But if they go the way of the natural man, you must not go that way. You go the way of the spiritual man. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bulls live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. That's the best answer we can give. These bulls, can they live? The sinners, can they be saved? These people that are almost, they've gone beyond the tip of the highest branch. Can they still live? The only answer we can give to that is, O oh Lord God of all possibilities, thou knowest. He knows that your family can be saved. He knows that your children can be saved. He knows that those people you've been preaching to before and they didn't respond, oh Lord God, thou knowest they can't be saved if we are submissive into the hands of the Lord to help them. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. What he tells you, don't modify it, the message. You know, sometimes you have the message. 
He has given you the message. The spirit of the Lord tells you, this is what to say. And when you come to the people you are to preach to, you look at their faces and then the way their faces are, you change the message and you waste your ministry. You waste your calling. Because that watered down message, that changed message, that message of fear, because you fear their look, that message will not work. The thing he told you to preach, the word he gave you before you saw their frightening uh, faces, that's the word to preach. He said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Then in verse 5, in verse 5, then thus says the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel is not the one to cause bread to come unto them. Ezekiel is not the one to convert people. Ezekiel is not the one to transform the lives of people. Ezekiel is not the one to heal the people. Ezekiel was not the one uh, to revive the people. It's God himself. And what can God do? you. He can do everything. He can do anything. Behold, I, the God of heaven, will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. Amen. That's the prophecy from God already. And Ezekiel shall understand, God had said, ye shall live. And the people were preaching to, they will live. The people were witnessing to, they will live. The people that God has sent us, no matter who they are, no matter where they have been, no matter how dead they might be, they will live in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it tells us there, and I, this is God talking, this is the work of God. We are just as messengers and we go to tell the people, the Lord says, I should tell you that you are going to be healed. The Lord says, I should tell you, you are not the one today. The Lord says, I should tell you that everything that binds you, everything that holds you down, everything that deadens your mind and your brain and your life, everything that pins you down, the Lord says he's going to remove it. The Lord sent me here to you today to tell you that a recreation will happen in your life. He sent me to tell you that a recommissioning will be in your life in Jesus' name. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know, and ye shall know, and ye shall know. However ignorant we are, he says we shall know that I am the Lord. The powerful proclamation of the prophet sent from God. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. Say not, I don't have experience. Say not, who am I? I cannot do that. Say not, I'm just a man, uneducated man. He said, say not, say not, I am an ignorant woman. Say not, I am, I've never done anything successful. And I look at my daddy, I look at grandfather, I look at this and that, and they never finished any project they started, and I am their child. No, you're a child of God. Amen. Since you became born again, all those things in hereditary uh, line following after you, all those things are totally cancelled. Because now, you don't say, it's a say not. And when God commands you, 
and you say say not and every time you are telling yourself that's exactly what God says say not I am defeated I cannot get up I am not powerful I don't have the spirit of God I don't have retentive memory I don't have understanding I know myself you don't know yourself you don't know yourself as God knows you Jeremiah did not know himself as God knew him and God said Jeremiah I'm walking with you. You are walking with me. And there's something that must never come out of your mouth again. Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go. Somebody there. <laughs> thou shalt go to all that I send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, be not afraid of their faces. For I I am with thee. You need a great amen there. I am with thee. I remember when I was trying to write the A, B, C alphabets. And you know, the teacher with me then will say, look at that A. Do it like that. I tried. I didn't get it. And then B, I didn't get it. And the teacher held my hand. And he did A. And he did B. And he did all those alphabets. And as long as the teacher was holding my hand and doing writing those things, you remember? Everything was all right. All of a sudden, because the teacher had held my hand, and I had written those things, the thing got into me, and I said, let me try. I tried, it worked. It will work in your life. The hand of the Lord will hold your hand. The word of the Lord will come out of your mouth. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. Jeremiah. The Lord said he has put his word in your mouth. How does it taste? Does it taste like sugar? Jeremiah said, I don't have any taste. Does it taste like pepper? I don't have any taste. Does it taste like sugar? Like salt? It doesn't have any taste. We don't go by how we feel. What it tastes like. When he puts his word in a mouth, you may not feel anything, but God said, I have put my word in thy mouth. The word of the Lord is in your mouth already. It may not taste like sugar. It may not taste like salt. It may not taste like any taste you are familiar with. What he said is done already. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, see, I have this day. This one did not happen yesterday. But this day it has happened. I have this day sent thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. Little Jeremiah, did you hear that? You said you need him to have strength to carry yourself. But... The Lord said, he puts his word in your mouth and he set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. Number one, to root out anything God has not planted in any community, anything the Lord has not planted in any place. As you go there, you are the instrument of God. Every plant not planted by the Lord God of heaven will be rooted out in Jesus' name. And to pull down, they will not pull you down. You'll pull everything down. 
and there's no point, you know, I'm going on. I don't know. These people are so powerful. I don't know whether they'll pull me down. They pull that one pull down Samson. That one pull down Solomon. You're not Solomon. You're not Samson. You're not Saul. They will not pull you down. Because the Lord himself has said, he puts you there and he ordained you there and he set you there and he says to pull down and to destroy. You will destroy the works of the devil and to throw down and to build. You'll be a builder. You'll build lives. You'll build families. You will build church, local church. You will build churches. You will build the kingdom in Jesus' name. And to plant. You have now become a planter. It will happen. Look at number two here. Number two is the penetrating preaching of preachers submissive to God. That's all we need. That's all we need. It sends you to do a work and the work appears difficult. No, don't look at the difficulty of the work. Look at the one who is sending you who is going to do it through you. And look at the height of the world. I've never climbed to that height before. I've never reached that place before. Don't look at that. Look at the one who is sending, be submissive unto him. Power will come through you. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37. And I'm reading from verse 7. It says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Isn't that all? So I prophesied as I was commanded. He has commanded. And he gave the command. This is what to say. I will be with your mouth. And I will make you say what I ordained you will say. That's the secret of getting people saved. That's the secret of getting people healed. That's the secret of getting people delivered. It's not that you feel a great energy in yourself. It's not that you feel taller when you're preaching. It's not that you feel so bold and aggressive. I can take on a lion. It's not what you feel. It is just standing there in the strength of the Lord and saying, and prophesying and preaching and declaring exactly what the Lord had commanded. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, not after I prophesied, as I prophesied, not before I prophesied, at the moment I was at the center. Of obedience to the Lord and at that time in the process of prophesying as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking you know the people that have been there nothing had ever shaken them nothing has ever moved them while you are declaring what God has said you should declare there will be a shaking and there was, it says, and behold, a shaking. And the bulls came together unto his bone. You understand? There are many bulls there. Bulls that, if you gather the right bulls, this one will make a soldier. The right bulls, this will make a soldier. And the bulls were very many. Like the bones of many soldiers in an army. They were scattered. They were dry. And yet, if you were to do it yourself, which bone do you put together with this? Only God can do it and I will do it. Amen. And as he prophesied, bones came to their bone. Then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews, the muscles and the flesh came upon them. That's a miracle. God will work miracles through you. All you need is to be submissive unto God who has sent you. And then he says, and the skin covered them above. He said, but 
There was no breath in them. One message, one declaration may not do it all. No breath in them prophesy again. No life in them prophesy again. If you're the kind of person that does one preaching and you're fagged out and you're totally tired and you say, that's all, I cannot do any other thing. Well, the final result might not have come by just one declaration. And if you are if you are expecting that dry bones will be joined together and dry bones will live again, if you expect that miracle of strength in the people you are preaching to, you yourself as well, you will experience that miracle. The tiredness will be taken away from the prophet, from the preacher. And the weariness and the scattering, my thoughts are scattered, my mind is scattered, and I cannot bring everything together. I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of that, and all the things inside my system, they are all scattered. Well, if God is going to use me to bring all those scattered bones together, all my scattered life and my scattered thoughts and my scattered deficiencies, everything will come together. Yeah. If God is going to work miracle on them through me, he will work a miracle in me through the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a miracle. And then you'll be a carrier of the miracle of new life in the lives of other people in Jesus' name. I feel sleepy, but the Lord is sending me to wake up. Those who are asleep, if the Lord is telling me and showing me and telling me that He's sending me to wake up, those who are asleep, me too, that I'm sleepy, I'm going to wake up. Because the same power, the same miracle, in fact, charity begins at home, inside here. In fact, power begins at home inside there. The tiredness I'm going to drive away from all those people, that tiredness I say in the name of Jesus, get out of me and it is gone. I said it is gone. Say it for yourself, get out of me. You're going to heal the sick and the sickness inside you there. Talk to that sickness Get out of me. You are going to cast out the spirit of fear in the lives of other people and then that spirit of fear in you. If you are going to be used of God to cast them out, you yourself, spirit of fear. Get out of me. And then you'll be standing like a soldier. And when you come, there is no doubt. God will use you. You are God's servant. And you are God's instrument to be used of God to revive those bones. And breath will come into them. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, Then said he unto me. Then said he unto me. Now, when God calls us, he says something to us. And everywhere you go, carry what is said unto you everywhere you go. What has he said to you? Did he say you will be a failure? Did he say I will be with you? Carry that with you. Did he say you will not fail because I will not fail you? Carry that with you. Everything the Lord has said unto you as we're going to the field, as we're going to the ministry, you don't carry with you what somebody else said. It's, um, you may know the name, Lester Sumrall. Lester Sumrall uh, felt the call of God. And he then he went to his, uh, you know, his father and he said, Daddy, Daddy. The Lord called me. I'm going to be a preacher. And the father looked at him and said, You, my son, don't build something 
you know it's impossible. You cannot be. And then he heard the wife of his brother in the other room and said, did you hear what your younger brother said? He said the Lord called him to be a preacher. And then uh, the wife of the younger brother of the senior brother said, even if it takes 1,000 years, let us roll, will never be able to preach effectively. 1,000 years. And he knew he wasn't going to live 1,000 years. If you carry that with you, you're not going to do anything in life. But, let's assume, after hearing from the father, after hearing from the wife of the senior brother, he carried what the Lord told him in his heart. And I want to tell you, he went to many countries of the world before he passed on. He had radio ministry in many stations. He had television ministry in many, uh, many stations. Carry what the Lord has told you. Don't carry what they told you, what they said about you, what they gossiped about you. And the things they have always been saying, and some of them are bold, and they come to you and they said, they, you went to a conference? Yes. Which conference? Kumuyi's conference? No, I didn't go to Kumuyi's conference. I go to the conference of ministers and of the Lord. And the Lord told me something. And what he told me, I'm carrying with me. Whatever you've come to say, I don't carry that with me. There will leave it and there will bury it. You will keep on carrying what the Lord has said unto you. He said you will succeed. He said you will make it. He said when you failed in the past, now you will succeed. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this lane that they may live. That's your calling. It will happen. I said, it will happen. It looked impossible in my personal life. Those who knew me when I was much younger, even when I became a Christian, and I was really, really born again, my Sunday school teacher, my uh, music teacher, uh, you know, he, he knew me as a quiet person. Whether I understood or I didn't understand, he didn't know. Because I was so shy, I could not stand before one person and say what's in my heart to them. I could not, uh, you know, stand and speak to five people what's in my heart. That's what he knew me for. He traveled to England. He was away for a long time. And then he came to Nigeria. And because of the respect, you know, I had for him as my Sunday school teacher and music teacher, I heard he was around. And I went to him where he was. And when he saw me, he recognized me. He said, uh, you know, mentioned my name. I said, yes, I always say yes to the people who are older than me and those who have helped me and trained me. And he said, when I came, I started hearing there's something here. They said, Kumui, something there, Kumui, conference there, Kumui, crusade there, Kumui. And I said, obviously, it's not the Kumui I know. And uh, he said, uh, Do you know that Kumui? I said, Yes, by the grace of God. And he said, Where is he? I said, He's the one standing before you. <laughs> Nobody thought I could, but God said I can. Nobody thought you could, but God said you are his instrument. You will do it in Jesus' name. Number three here, number three here, we're looking at the prevailing power of 
proof producers supported by God. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10. So I prophesied, you'll prophesy confidently, courageously, expectantly, knowing what your prophesy will come to pass. He said, so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and they stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. You have become part of that great army today. Everything you need, all the foresight you need, all the might you need, all the power you need, all the provision you need, all the finance you need, everything is available for you. You will do it. I will do it. Even when you're having a feeling inside you, can this happen? You know, when you're, when you're doing something you have never done before, you'll have that kind of feeling. You are not walking by feeling, you are walking by faith. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah. I see it on your face already. I see it in your ministry already. Even if whatever condition you are in now, that condition will change. Power, life, vitality, come into everyone in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the works of supernatural, of the supernatural Savior for everyone. Actually, what we have read is chapter 37. There is something preceding 37 is 36. When that 36, when it happens in my life, then I'll be ready to be transported into chapter 37. Let's look at that, chapter 36 of Ezekiel. And we're reading from verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. And from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Somebody say, Amen. And then in verse 27, it says, And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do do it for them, and I will increase them with men like a flock. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the washing of regeneration by the Savior. Number two, we're looking at the work of renewal by the sanctifier. Number three, we're looking at the wonder of refreshing through the Spirit. Number one. Number one is the washing of regeneration by the Savior. In verse 25 of that Ezekiel chapter 36, it says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. He says he will do it himself. He'll do it for Ezekiel. He'll do it for the nation of Israel. He'll do it for everyone after Ezekiel. Even until today, anyone that calls upon him, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. You'll be clean. I said you'll be clean. And this is the work of God. What he said he will do. You. He says, from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I 
cleanse you. Uh, you know, sometimes when you read that, you say, I'm not an idol worshiper. All your idols, I will cleanse you of them. Understand the language of God. Whatever is so important, whatever is so much near to you that you always think about and that thing takes your mind, your heart, your thought, your aspiration, your ambition, that thing becomes so important in your life, it shields out the almighty God and the calling of God in your life, that is an idol. Maybe a small thing, a little coin that you put so near your eyes, it blocks out the rest of the world. That is the idol. A little pleasure that blocks out every good thing you could ever think about. That is the idol. A little thing that you are committed to and if you were to go and do something great and that thing comes, you say, I must attend to this first. This is the idol, and, it's, and when the idol is there, when there's something you love more than God, and when there's something that takes all your attention, all your life, all your resources, when there's something that blocks the future away from your sight, what could you do? But God said, I know the problem, I'll take care of that problem. He'll take it away from you. As I look at my personal life, pardon me, I look at things that were so important for me in the past, many, many years ago. And those things, if, if not even sinful things, normal things, ordinary things, and they so much grabbed my heart and my attention, and I gave my brain, my thoughts, my mind, my energy, my resources to do not bad things, not evil things, but they blocked out the call to preach. They blocked out the, the, the call to evangelize. They blocked out the call to develop the healing ministry. And eventually I realized, I said, this is costing me more than I can afford. And I pushed them aside and the Lord helped me. They, were, they didn't interest me anymore. And now I could face what the Lord has called me to. Is there something in your life, good thing, I'm not talking of sinful things, even bad things, that so much arrest your life, that you concentrate on them and all your energy, all your wisdom, your spending on them. It has become an idol. It may be my fellow student, my fellow brother, my colleague is doing this. What did you? I can do. They possess this. I can possess that too. They write this and I must write that too. And that becomes something that consumes your life, consumes your thoughts. It's an idol. It's an idol. And that idol blocks away your success, your future, your destiny away from you. Today, the Lord will cleanse you from there. Regeneration. He will renew your life. The Savior loves you. And he knows that this little toy, you don't know it's a toy, this little toy will block the reality of your creation, why you were created, it will block it away from you. And the Lord, in His saving power, in His saving grace, it comes to your life, He takes them away. You're free. Yeah. I said, You are free. Yeah. You don't have any pull to that toy anymore. Look at the next point here. Number two is the work of renewal by the sanctifier. I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. And a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you an heart of flesh. A good amen. amen. I never thought about it, but 
my father, natural father, biological father. He was a strong man. And I grew up under him, obviously. And the kind of heart he had, he feared nothing. And as I grew up with him, I also had that same mind. I went my own way. I did my own thing. And if you know where I come from, apart from my father, our community, our people, that's the way they are. They had that inner strength, not spiritual, but born again. And whatever they said, they will not do. They will not do it. And so, as I was growing up, I, you know, had my own way of living. And we went to school. That's what they supposed. But I didn't go to school. I just wanted to, you know, enjoy myself, climb that tree and get that fruit and do that and do that. And uh, so when I do that, I'll go home. If I want to take food or biscuit or whatever, I go there. I know that my father would have gone to work. Then, before they finish school, I will go to school. I may not enter the class, but while the young people are going out, I come out with them, I come home, and it's like I've gone to school. But this particular day, my father was at home when I left school, and I came back home, and I saw him. But it didn't show that I was surprised. He said, ah, have you finished coaching? I said, no. He said, why are you here? He said, would you come and collect harvest money? <laughs> he said, how much? I said, two and a half uh, shillings. He took the money. He didn't give me. He said, let's go. <laughs> and so, we got to school and my father went to the principal, to the headmaster's office, Mr. Doherty, and said, my boy came home and said this, oh, he said, we have a problem with your son. He never stays in school. And so my father said, Mr. Doherty, do me a favor. Gather all the school together. And he did. And my father said, a hefty boy should mount me on the back. And he himself, in front of all the school, gave me six terrible, painful strokes of the cane. But he show it that the kind of heart I had. So the following day, my father said, Now go to school. Don't do like you have been doing. I said, I'm not going to school. I'm okay the way I am. Remember, he was strong. I was strong. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I'll be a farmer. And I knew, I knew what he had been thinking. He had told me that the education he did not have, I will have. The certificate he did not have, I will have. I wanted his dream. I didn't know it was my dream. It was his dream. I wanted the dream to collapse. And I said, no schooling. And he forgot himself and gave me a cutlass to go to the farm, his farm. And I went. All the cocoa yam and the yam and everything, I caught them up. That the kind of stony heart I had. And the term came to an end. They were going to start another term, January 1952. And then he called me and he said, my son, 
please. My father never said please to anybody in the family, anybody in the community. He was the man, the strong man, strong heart there. And when I saw my father almost crying, he knew that his vision will collapse. If I didn't go back to school, he said, my boy, tell me what you want, I'll give you. But please go back to school. When I saw he changed, I changed. And I said, Daddy, don't mind. I will go back to school. And I went back to school, finished primary, finished secondary, finished university, became a lecturer because I changed my mind. You know, in life, we have that stony heart. We have that nature that says what I said I will not do, I will not do. What I said, I will not go there, I will not go there. What if I didn't change my mind? What if I saw my father almost crying and saying, my son, please, please, Forget what I did. I put you to shame when I beat you in front of the school. Please, I've changed. I shouldn't have done that. Go back to school. And I said, I surrender. A time comes in your life when you understand having that stony heart, that adamant will, and seeing. I will not go. And you think you're punishing dad, you're punishing mom, you're punishing the people there because of that decision. You want to ruin your career? Please. You want to ruin your life, your future? Please. Let him take away the stony heart. And then he will give you an heart of flesh. And a new ministry will start in your life. Yeah. A new power will be given unto you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Whatever name we call it, we call it renewal, we call it sanctification, we call it inner transformation. Don't worry about terminology. Let that heart of flesh come to you today. And the sky is the limit in your progress in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, we're looking at the wonder of refreshing through the Spirit. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Wait in Jerusalem until ye be in there with power from on high. For ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. The promise is unto you and to your children and to many that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He has called you and the promise of empowerment is given unto you in Jesus' name. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. Amen. It will happen. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, the wonders through the spirit saturated servants for evangelism. We're looking at uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. We're looking at verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet and exceeding in a great army. Everyone in that great army had the same confidence, had the same faith, had the same power, had the same go-getting ability. Everyone in the army of the Lord today here, online, everywhere will have the same power. 
the same authority and will have the same success in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostle chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 4 Acts chapter 8 verse 4 therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word will soon uh, leave uh, you know the conference hall and will scatter everywhere and you go with power and you go with authority and you go with new anointing you'll be preaching the word and through you multitudes will be saved and through you multitudes will be healed you will be a proof producer in Jesus name and we're looking at this under three perspectives number one the wonder of a standing great army for exploits. Number two, the wonderful works of a steadfast army for edification. Number three, the will and the willingness of a saint army to fulfill expectations. Look at number one. Number one, the wonder of a standing great army for exploits. We're ready to ready. So Ezekiel prophesied. So I prophesy. So you will prophesy as the Lord has commanded us. And the bread will come into them. All those who are dead in their soul and their spirit, the bread of the Lord will come to them when you proclaim the truth unto them in Jesus' name. And they live your family will live. They will live in Christ. They will live in righteousness. Hey, don't worry, don't worry about how far they have gone. Your boy, your girl, your daughter is running away from home. The prayer here will reach them where they are. Will call them back and get them back in Jesus' name. Your church, your church. Anytime you're coming, it was okay. It comes again, let him preach. And I know when he goes in this year, it will go out the other year. Don't worry, don't worry. This time, your word will stay inside them. They will come alive in Jesus' name. It says, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. And they stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. It tells us how to stand. It tells us in Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 20. You know, these uh, apostles have been locked up. Anything that locked you up, the door is open to them. They said, didn't we tell you not to preach in this name? You fill Jerusalem with your doctrine and they lock them up because they thought if they lock them up, they lock up the gospel. They lock up the anointing. They lock up the healing power. Anything that tries to lock you up, angels will come from heaven and open the door of your prison in Jesus' name. Look at my brother there. The way I look at you, you are not a man anyone, anybody can lock up. Yeah. Look at my sister, my daughter there. I see the new spirit coming upon you today. And the way I see you, the power I see in you today, you are not a candidate for locking up. Yeah. There's any man any woman, if there's any situation that tries to lock you up, look at angels coming from heaven with the key and they will open every locked door in Jesus' name. Welcome to the army of the Lord in Jesus' name. And the angel said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life verse 21 and when they had that they entered into the temple early in the morning and they taught people it's happened for them it will happen for you now coming to number two number two is the wonderful works 
of steadfast, the steadfast army edifying. You will edify the church. You will edify your family. You will lift up the fallen. You will energize the powerless. That's what edification is for. And the Lord has not raised you up to destroy people and to clamp down people and to hate them and to bottle them up. The Lord is putting the key into your hand. All the people that are depressed and downtrodden, the Lord will use that key in your hand. You open doors for them. They will come out of their cage. Release that bird. That bird can fly except that it's in a cage. Open that cage and many birds will fly to the sky. It says in, the, in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, and it gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and he gave some evangelists and he gave some pastors and teachers he gave he gave he gave what are you getting today what are you having today and there was a time of just an ordinary member in a very good church a great church but just a member there I didn't know he gave me anything and so I went in and I went dutiful. I never miss any service. And I come in, I go out, I come in, I go out. I never knew I got something. But one day I realized he gave. He gave. He gave. He gave some apostles. I said, I don't want to be proud. You know, the father is distributing something to all his children. And one of the children, I don't want to be proud. My son, that's not pride. Your father has the best for you. Your father will give you something that will fulfill what you are called to do on earth. And the purpose of your birth on earth, the purpose of your calling in the ministry and the purpose of you being here at such a time as this. He will give you the gift that will match the calling of your life. He gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists. He gave some pastors. He gave some teachers. Now, just to, you know, when you have, um, you know, a member of the family like me, your brother, say amen. amen. When I tell you, my brother, come. You know, he gave some how did he give me? He gave me number one. He starts from the lowest, from the last one there. He gave me to be a teacher. And I said, thank you, Lord. I accept that. And then I, you know, started a Bible study of 15 people because he gave me the gift of a teacher. And then he says, come. You've used the gift of teaching faithfully. And he gave some pastors. And he gave me the gift of a pastor. And you say, no, this one is enough. I got the gift of a teacher, the gift of a pastor. And then he says, come, come. You've used the gift of teaching and pastoring. Well, I give you the gift of an evangelist. I said, me, I don't want you to stand before a crowd. Except the crowd I know that come every Monday. But to go to a strange land and then be speaking to people I didn't know. He said, no, it's not what you have. It's what you are now going to have. And he gave me that of the evangelist. And I thought, praise the Lord, isn't this enough? He said, come, you will prophesy. I said, what? The gift of a prophet. And then he said, come. The fingers on your hand are not complete until you have all the five. This little one, teacher, that's the one you put in your ear when it's scratching. 
the teacher. That the one that's where you put your wedding on anger, that's the pastor. This one that is, you know, beyond all, them all, that one is the evangelist. And this one here that points and says, Thou art the man, that the prophet, this one. This one, this one, that if you are going to hold anything together, you need it that they are possible. And he wants you to be able to hold everything together, even though you started as a teacher, then a pastor, then evangelist, the prophet, now an apostle. I say that to tell you that he gave this, this, this to different people, you will not miss out. He will give you. And what he gives, I accept. I accept. I utilize. And then I bear fruit. I see you bearing fruit. Look at number three here. Number three is the will and the willingness of a saint army to fulfill expectation. God has expectation upon your life. The expectation will be fulfilled. Christ has expectation in your life. That expectation will be fulfilled. And our people your members, your church, knowing that you're going to an empowering conference. They have expectation on you. That expectation will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Those who call you by the title you have, they said, pastor, then they mention your name. They say evangelist, then they mention your name. Then they said prophet so and so, they mention your name. They said apostle, and they mention your name. And those people that mention your calling uh, with you, they have expectation. That expectation will be fulfilled in your life. They say, mommy, mother in Israel. Say, you just accept but mother in Israel has responsibility has power and that name they call you mother in Israel anybody there mother in Israel I said anybody there the expectation of heaven for making you a man a woman and a mother in Israel today the beginning of a new life beginning of a new ministry somebody comes to you and said man of God can I have a bit of your time man of God what did they call man of God they call Moses man of God when you call somebody a man of God there's an expectation people have of the man of God. They called Elijah man of God. They called Elisha man of God, man of God. Have you come to bring remembrance to my sin? Now my child is dead and man of God said, bring the child unto me. And then he prayed, life came up from heaven. And then he said, mother, take your child. And the woman said, now I know know that you are a man of God indeed and the word of God in your mouth is truth. Man of God, any man of God there? Woman in Israel, any woman in Israel there? You will fulfill expectation. While that amen is fresh in your mouth, stand up and tell the Lord, I am created for expectation. I am raised up for expectation. I am being edified for expectation. Expectation in your life. Expectation in your ministry. Power. Anointing. A recreation. A rejuvenation. A recommissioning for exploits in the kingdom. At such a time as this. Don't belittle yourself anymore. Don't cut down yourself anymore. 
Don't say, I'm a Miss Tamara, what can I say? I'm just a child, what can I say? The Lord knew that before he called you. The Lord knew that before he appointed you a new creation. A new recreation. A new revitalization. Penetrating preaching, you declare the word with all the inner energy, vib vibrancy that you have, and the word will penetrate the hearts of the people. Discover the purpose for which the Lord has raised you up. Dedicate your life to that purpose for which the Lord has raised you up. Be up and do it. Up and do it. Nobody will put you in a prison of uselessness. Nobody will imprison you. The life of uselessness. Angels of God come from heaven and he open those doors of the prison and you come out to do what you were created to do. The prevailing power of proof Producers. He wants to wash you clean. He wants to take all the idols out of your heart, out of your life. Those little, little things that come so close that they block out the future. Take all the idols away. Let him free you from every idol. Let him take the stony heart out of your flesh. That's adamant, stony. Heart that says what I said is what I said, even if that is ruining your life. What I do is what I'll keep doing, even though that is blocking your destiny away from your side. Let him take away that stony heart and give you. A heart of flesh. A change 
a transformation, a sanctification, a purifying of your heart, of your life, of your inner man. Saved, sanctified, filled, baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost. Places all the weakness that replaces all the impotence, powerlessness of the past. Power from on high. The promise is unto you and to your children and to those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call he'll change you to another man he'll change you to another woman he'll give you gifts that match your calling He'll give you gifts that match your calling. Man of God. Woman in Israel. Teacher. Pastor. Evangelist. Prophet. Apostle soul winner will give you gifts that match that make that matures your calling tell the Lord
said amen the angels have said amen he has granted your request he has turned you to another man he has transformed you to another woman what you could not do before now you can I can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You may not know you can, but I know you can. You may not know you have a new power, but I know you have a new power. You may not know there's a new ability, but I know in you, my brother, in you, my sister, there's a new ability. If you are the one I'm talking about, where are you? Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand on your heart. Your heart is, say, uh, you know, on the left hand side there. Lay the right hand there and raise up the other hand. Power has entered into that heart. Anointing has entered into that heart. The Lord has now revealed a future picture in your ministry, in your calling, you begin to see the spirit of the Lord moving you as he did unto Samson. And at that time, you rise and pursue. You will achieve. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have heard what we have sent from heaven. And your word has worked effectually in every heart. Every brother, every sister, every man of God, every woman in Israel. I pray a new anointing upon everyone. New power upon everyone new assurance in everyone. Lord, the ministry that is there, which we have not seen, open our eyes to see. The opportunity there that we have not felt or known, Lord, open our inner sight to see it in Jesus' name. The provision, the finance, the opportunities, the helpers, the supporters we didn't see before, show them to us. The victory, the triumph, the success we had not seen before, give us eyesight, insight, we see them now. My brother, go in this power. My sister, go in this power. The way were clear before you. Enemies were clear before you. The Lord will not stop walking on you until you become everything he has created you for. Lord, bring a new day, a new power, a new anointing, a new success, a new achievement. Give everyone the conquering power. You can go now and you'll be more than a conqueror. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. 
Jesus' name I pray.